three. <laughs> so awesome to be going this fast <laughs> with just the mizzen. This is crazy. Yeah. So the reason that we're freaking out about going three knots <laughs> is the apparent wind has dropped to like, it was almost nothing. You could barely feel it a second ago. It's like just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit because uh, we're going downwind. And normally with our working sails, we'd be going one and a half, 1.8 knots, maybe something if like that. If we were that. lucky, we were at like barely kissing too. Because there's, I mean, there's almost no wind, but look at this. <laughs> got that thing pulling. It's set really nicely. We just got the spinnaker and then we got the mizzen flying and it's just super quiet, super calm out here. Like I said, <clears throat> just a breath of wind and we're doing three knots. For our 30,000 pound full keel boat, that's pretty damn good. <laughs> and I still can't believe what a great fit this spinnaker is. And again, we're not even flying it like properly. We don't have a, a pole or anything like that, but it's still setting and pulling really, really nicely. You're coming too. Join us as we grow from a building channel to a sailing channel. One day we'll be floating in the tropics and I'll be drinking a margarita. Our heading is set south and our home-built boat is getting us there. Can't wait to show you guys. We're Salt and Tar, and this is our life. We're happy to share, and thanks for watching. This is like a pretty big deal for, um, for just our ability to sail and to be self-sufficient and not have to motor. So we're working on our light wind sails. We still have more that I want to get, but this is a great start. First yeah. test. Yeah, first test and it's going great. So stoked, pretty stoked. I can't believe that we're doing three knots right now. <laughs> <laughs> Today, there was absolutely no wind at all. So I really didn't think that we were even gonna put the sails up. And then as we were hoisting the anchor, there was like a little bit of a breeze and we basically sailed the entire way today. And we're going way faster than I thought we would, even if we were able to put up sails. Yeah, we only turned the motor on to get out of the anchorage. Yeah. Man, this is, this is fantastic. And Charles it. is doing a great job. Good. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not doing anything. I'm no. Just, I'm just sitting. <laughs> no, the boat's very, very well balanced with this rig. Three, two. Three, two. Oh my gosh. We're flying. Yeah, we're only like Look at that. three miles away, Look give or that. take. Four, maybe. Holding at three, two. It's really cool to be buddy boating with Yeah, him. I don't know if you can see, he's like right there. I think we've only buddy boated with Reed one time. And we did two legs. It was when his previous boat, and like what, two boats ago, three boats ago for us, when we did San Francisco to Monterey, Monterey to Morro Bay. Mm -hmm. However many years that was. That was before we started building Red Aviva. Damn, she looks sexy! Back then, Reed had an Ingrid 38 named Luna, and we were on our fifth boat together, an Aries 32 named Serena, a speedy little cutter we miss fondly.
space a lot flying wing on wing and uh, I was able to reef down just uh, holding my course. Yeah, same here. Uh, we were hauling ass, and uh, but we started to get a little squirrely, going a little too fast. So yeah, reef down is basically three miles away. All right, well, uh, don't mind me flailing about here in just a few minutes. All right, sounds good. Oh, this is awesome. This is nice. It's just very, very relaxed. Chill sailing. <laughs> oh, it's hurricane season in uh, like a week. <laughs> we should probably be going that way. <laughs> <laughs> we will, we will. Come down. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone says that don't really have to worry about storms in June, so. <laughs> <laughs> She's a thing of beauty. I'm so stoked that that worked out too when we went back to the States. Like you had been looking for probably three weeks before we went back to the States because we had an idea that we were gonna do it. And yeah, and didn't really find anything. Most things were all too big for our stubby gaff rig. Yeah. And. <laughs> Yeah, you found this and it was cheap. Like a lot of the things that were like close to fitting, but like a little bit too large for yeah. like $800. Or a thousand or a thousand. Or whatever. Thousand. Yeah, we didn't want to spend a thousand dollars on something that it was like not really a, a gonna be a good fit because yeah. everything was too big because the gaff rig is just such weird um, dimensions. So this was the only one that was not too big, although it was a symmetric and you know not exactly what we're looking for but again it flies beautifully so i'm i'm just like <laughs> i was just being stubborn i'm like i'm not leaving the states <laughs> empty-handed i'm leaving with a sail even if it's not even if it doesn't work at all like i'm i'm leaving with the sail the people that we bought the spinnaker from the woman her dad owns a boat that i used to work on when i was a teenager <laughs> small world sailing world yeah <laughs> And we haven't hoisted the other one that we brought back, which my sister happened to still be holding on to. Yeah, that one's giant. It was going to be the Whomper. <laughs> to make our approach into our anchorage for the night, we had to jibe rocket pop to the other side. getting real nerdy. <laughs> okay, what are we, 3.3 3 knots, 3.6. 3, Every now and then 3. it goes 4. up to four. So we're averaging about three and a half knots apparent wind. Over two knots and three and a half knots of wind on a 30,000 pound boat. I was totally trying to guess earlier and <laughs> Garrett's like, there's no wind. I was like, it's like at least eight knots. And he's like, no way. No, so it's I had, not. I had to get this out. 
ten. It's half of what I thought it was. It's not even half of what you said. Eight. <laughs> it's not. gusting to four. Okay. Yeah. It's cons. It's consistently three and a half. It's, it's average three and a half knots. Yeah, it's like three point two to max four point four. There's four. Yeah, it's a gust. <laughs> and of course, yeah. now we're like super stoked on. <laughs> all of this already we're like ooh, what about a mizzen staysail oh yeah of course because now <laughs> we're like yeah if we could point a little bit higher we could make straight into our anchorage and if we had a code zero and then a mizzen a mizzen staysail ripstop nylon now nah, that would be sweet yeah. <laughs> the boat balances out great the wind vane is barely doing any work and we're pretty much sailing right on a beam reach and the boat's still pulling. Another benefit as to why we left when we did and the boat's still not being done is now we get to try out all these different things in real time test, not like staying at the dock and yeah. coming up with all these ideas and sometimes buying things that you think you need and then you're out and you're like, well, that's actually not gonna work. This is like giving us fun ideas for yeah, ooh, a mizzen staysail, what would that look like? What would be perfect? Now we have some real life data to be making better decisions and, you know, dropping a couple grand on a new sail like that would be perfect. Be when worth we, it, yeah. yeah when, we know, when we know what we want. Yeah. I've ever been. <laughs> You're just hating. <laughs> Not hating, appreciating. Hammock on the foredeck was one of the top things I looked forward to when the build was done. Ellie rode over for dinner. We had a little ground beef left and Garrett bulked it up with a can of chicken. Our celebratory meal to light wind and brothership. There's gonna be some loaded Hell yeah. makeshift burgers. Maybe it's good. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna fire up the grill. Feast. We feast. Thank you guys. Hell yeah. I think mean, I just had a mouth gasm. So don't tell me this is X-rated. <laughs> mm. Oh my god. <laughs> Thank you. 
gonna get a little head start on some editing, but first I'm gonna make coffee. And before even that, I had to appreciate how beautiful After coffee and breakfast burritos, we check the weather. Reed's crew is flying into La Paz, which means road trip, and we have a few days before we need to get the boats settled on a mooring in Escondido. Might actually be worth waiting till tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow looks like we can actually sail. That would be nice. I like sailing. Sailing's sailing. good. Sailing good. We wanted to be in Escondido by Monday, the 29th. We want to rent a car Monday morning. We want to rent, so we want to already be there. Probably. Okay. Reed's back in the water to earn a ride to La Paz, cleaning Redaviva's hull. He's already finished the port side and is now assessing the starboard side. We've been full-time cruising now for a year. Not much growth could attach until we stopped moving for a month for our trip back to the States. Still not bad, but you'd be surprised what little fuzz can do to your speed. The paint is holding up great, and so is the wood sheathing that protects the real hull planking. The only areas the paint is failing is where we didn't sand away the crappy primer we used completely, so above the chine and on her ballast. Her ballast runs the whole length of the keel and is concrete with encapsulated steel, so some chipping paint is not an issue, but she's ready for her upcoming haul out and bottom job. Yeah, the port side looks nice. Finally got to that stage where I'm installing wood plugs on the interior. 
Uh oh, you're getting bored. <laughs> I call it the movie thing. <laughs> I almost can't remember that this wood is orange. I know, it's gonna be really nice to sand it back. I'm starting to look forward to our trajectory. Get a slip for Red Aviva, rent a place to live for a few months. We're gonna take out all the cushions and then we can re do all of the paint down here, sand, everything that Garrett is wood plugging now, <laughs> and actually get closer to finishing Red Aviva. We've just taken a bit of a break, a much needed break, <laughs> and some much needed sailing and nautical miles. Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually looking forward to getting into some projects. Mike. You're scheming. Yeah. Yeah. I wanna make some sawdust. <laughs> I wanna I just wanna build things again. I'm I'm missing I mean building building stuff has always been like one of the my biggest loves, passions if you will. But I just completely lost all taste for you know building stuff through this process, but it's coming back and it's coming back like pretty intensely. So, big one, Garrett wants to build a dinghy. <laughs> a rowing, sailing dinghy, so that is to come soon. That's gonna be fun. <laughs> Me, on the other hand, Garrett has hung up the hammock, and I'm gonna read a book. Some people might start by building a dinghy, but not Garrett. My hammock and my book is waiting. <laughs> Garrett might be ready to start building things but I have yet to really slow down my brain to feel like I've done just this enough. Sitting, doing nothing. Ugh. The boys got their work. I already worked this morning. I got several hours of editing done. And so now it's my relax time. And the view is not bad. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, please consider giving us a like or leaving a comment and subscribe so we can do it again next week. better. Well, it was too low before. <laughs> Make up your mind. <laughs> what do you want from me? <laughs> Actually stretched down quite a yeah. bit. Yeah, it's because I'm smart. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Maybe I should just run the map. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> and this was all without a single drop of rum. <laughs> oh. Okay, now it's almost high enough. This has to be center line. Yeah, well, that's just like your opinion, man. <laughs>